Hello, I am Joe. And I am Jack. And today we're going to talk about our all time best road cycling upgrades from our time here at Bike Radar. If you're anything like us, this will be a familiar scenario. You've lusted for months after your favourite road bike, and you've bought the road bike, and all is good in the world. But then, a little voice starts to creep into your head. Perhaps those tyres are a little heavy. Do I need carbon bars? Yes, upgrading your bike can be somewhat addictive. And this is what this video is all about. We have each chosen four of our favourite all-time upgrades, and we're going to tell you about why we think they're amazing. Some of the upgrades are old, some of them are new, some of them are cheap, and some of them are eye-wateringly expensive. But before we get on with our choices, an editorial disclaimer. While we do do sponsored content on Bike Radar, and you will always know about it because it is marked in the video description, and we have to tell YouTube when we upload it, this video is 100% editorial. That means that all of the products we're about to talk about have either been bought with our own money or they've been sent in for an independent review, meaning that our choices are totally independent and ones we would back up. And before we get on with the show, remember that if you want to see more content like this, more unironed shirts, more net bits, more Harry Potter glasses, more bad haircuts, and other things that you hate about us that you love to let us know about in the comments, do not forget to like, subscribe, and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a video, you will get a notification. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got that out of the way, on to Jack's first pick. Now this is not technically an upgrade, but it's something I've wanted to talk about for quite some time. It's often said that in bikes everything is getting more and more expensive and more and more unattainable, but one place I think this is not true is kit. In the last few years things like bib shorts, jerseys, just pretty much everything in cycling kit has gotten cheaper and better. And the one thing I think you can do to really upgrade your riding is buy yourself a properly good set of bib shorts. Now obviously your Raffas and Castellis and Assosses of this world are still super expensive and you can easily pay what, £200 for a pair of their shorts? Easily. But these days like a £60, £70 pair of DHB shorts are almost as good as those shorts these days. They really, really have just upgraded the way they make these shorts, the materials that are used, and I think more competition in the market has brought the prices down and down further. Now we all have our own preferences. My personal favourite is a set of Pearl Azumi Pro shorts. I used them a lot last year, they're my absolute all-time favourites. But I think trying out a lot of shorts in that mid-range if you can afford to do so, or referring to excellent independent editorial reviews on websites like Bike Radar to find a good set is a really good way to make sure you get the most out of your time on the bike. It's a really simple one, it might sound like a cop-out, but honestly, invest in good shorts, you won't regret it. My first pick is Shimano's SBD SL pedal system. Like many road riders, although I do do a bit of mountain biking as well, I spent many of years chopping and changing between different pedals. I tried Look, Shimano, Speed Play and Time, but eventually settled on Shimano and I haven't looked back since. Why? Well first, I love the fact that the pedal and cleat interface is virtually the same across all the models, right from the high end, so Dura Ace, right down to the more affordable RS and R500 models. This means no matter what your budget, there should be a pedal for you. The cleat is also nice and wide, which for one thing makes them nice and easy to walk in. So when you casually step off your bike and walk to the calf, you look that bit cooler. But it also makes for a really stable pedaling platform. You get three different float options to choose from, so that should suit even the most fussy of knees. And from my experience, they are built like absolute tanks. I still have a set from 2010, they are still going strong. Now, obviously, pedal preference is a personal thing, so please let me know in the comments why I've gone totally mad thinking that Shimano is the best pedal interface available, but for me, I'm going to be sticking with them for the foreseeable future. So in conclusion, I think a brilliant pedal needs to have the perfect balance of four things. Stability, durability, adjustability, and price. With Shimano, I feel you get the best combination of those available. So what is your upgrade number two? Good tyres. It's probably the most commonly criticised thing in reviews, and if you really want to upgrade 
the overall ride feel of your bike, tires is the place to start. Now again, just like pedals or shorts for that matter, tires are a highly personal thing and they really depend on where you are and what you decide to choose from. In my experience, I really like relatively wide, so let's say like 30 mil, quite supple tubeless tires. That's what I find works for the type of riding I do. And as I mentioned in my gear of the year video a little while ago, the WTB Exposure 30 is probably my top tire of the moment. It's supple enough to give you a really nice ride quality, so it corners really good, it feels quite comfortable, but it's also backed up with pretty good durability as well. The fact that it comes in a tan wall finish, which as we all know, is the coolest type of tire, is just the icing on the cake. There's other tires out there I've used which have really impressed me. I really like the Challenge Paris Roubaix I used last year, so they were a little bit more fragile. Things like the GP4000 and now the GP5000 are also stalwarts of the cycling world. But really, upgrading from what is usually pretty okay stock rubber to something a little bit more high end will make a massive difference to the ride quality of your bike. And probably a more affordable upgrade compared to something like a group set or a set of wheels. Yeah, and it's also going to make a bigger difference as well. You know, you're talking. Even at the highest end, what, like 120 quid at retail for a set of super high-end tires, whereas a full group set, even at a discount, is probably going to set you back at least four or 500 quid. So yeah, a new set of tires on most new bikes is probably the place I would start. I've been racing my bike for 11 years now, and during that 11 years, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to get faster. But perhaps nothing has helped me get faster more than a power meter. Way back in 2010, I got my first PowerTap power meter. I think it was around a thousand pounds at the time, so a serious investment, and you didn't see many of them out on your local club ride. Fast forward to today, and power meters now regularly come under the 500 pound mark, and you see them on nearly every calf and club ride every weekend. And whilst a new set of wheels or a really cool new group set might be a much sexier upgrade, the totally objective wattage data you get from a power meter really helps you if you want to get faster and that's what counts. Obviously it is a training tool so just having one in itself won't make you faster but for the budding racer in me it's one of the best upgrades I've ever had. Now on the other end of the spectrum something that is guaranteed to make you slower is getting hit by a car. And one thing I will not ride without these days, and I think it's true with the whole Bike Radar team, is daytime running lights. It's absolutely crazy to think that even five years ago, I would consider riding in the day without at least some kind of additional illumination beyond my jazzy cycling clothes out on the road. It makes absolutely no sense. Obviously technology has moved on and lights have got increasingly smaller, more powerful, much more reliable as well. But these days you will not find me on the road and I would hope the same can be said of you without daytime running lights. There's a number of favourite options. We quite like the Lazine strip drive rear lights and the matching front lights. There's also the popular Bontrager Ion and Flare, which kind of popularised the concept of daytime running lights. But really, if you want to be out there, feel safe and make sure you're going to be riding for many happy years to come, I highly, highly recommend you invest in a set of daytime running lights. But one last thing. It's frustrating to put the onus on being safe and seen on cyclists and I'm well aware of that argument, but it's the status quo as it is, so for now, please invest in the lights. From my last very expensive upgrade, I now go to something much, much cheaper. It's a humble £5 aluminium bottle cage. Some years ago, I remember reading something from a famous coach where they said 80% of races are lost through poor hydration. And that kind of stuck with me, namely the fact that if you want to do well, you need to get your hydration right. But in order to get your hydration right, you need to know that your bottle is always going to be there on your bike. And that means you need an ultra reliable bottle cage. Years ago, I went for a period of trying loads of different bottle and cage combos. I even tried the one that Team Sky used, but I'd always end up losing a bottle when I hit a pothole or on a rough section of road. Seemingly destined to be poorly hydrated forever, I eventually tried a five pound bottle cage. I think it was by Toe Peak, the first one I had, and I haven't looked back since. It might not be the most attractive or the lightest or the coolest, but it has held my bottles 
100% of the time, I have never lost a bottle in any of these five pound aluminium cages. That's amazing because I also do a lot of cross country and marathon racing when it's really bumpy. I use the same cages, still no bottle lost. If the terrain you're riding is really, really bumpy, you can also bend these cages slightly, which will hold the bottle even more securely. As I've said, there's loads of different brands out there. I've had a Topeak one, I've used a Manura one, some unbranded ones as well, and they've always held up really well. So for that reason, my five pound bottle cages, I salute you. Now, seemingly sticking with the frustrating and non-committal theme, I suggest you try and find a handlebar that you absolutely love. My favourite of the moment is the imaginatively named Specialised Shallow Bend Carbon. I actually used this bar at the very last minute on the coast to coast ride I mentioned earlier that Joe and I did, and that was on that diverge, and since then I've swapped the bars onto my All City Mr Pink. I really just love the overall shape of these bars, they're not too fussy with any weird wiggles, they've got a nice flattened and slightly sloped down top, and the hooks are kind of big enough that I can get in the drops and not bash my arms off of the tops. And that kind of simple overall fit really suits me well, but it's taken me quite a long time to find that bar that I really like. Luckily, you don't have to buy really expensive carbon bars, and cheap alloy bars of all sorts of different shapes and sizes are available on the market relatively affordably as well. So much like shorts or tires or saddles, Handlebars are one of these things that you should really think about swapping because you don't know what could be out there that could suit you that little bit better. And it's worth mentioning here that your bike for that coast to coast ride, which was 282 kilometers, so a really long day out on the bike, that bike was ready the day before. You hadn't ridden that bar before and you were totally comfortable for that whole ride. So it shows how well it fits you and how, how much you like it. Yeah, and it was totally by chance as well. Like I had to use it at the last minute because I was quite unorganized before the ride. But I won't look back. It's definitely going to be one of my favorite bars for the foreseeable future. My last pick is unfortunately another very pricey one and something I wouldn't have chosen until about midway through last year. Yet, no matter how hard I tried to think of an upgrade that was more obscure or would really make you think or was more cool, I kept coming back to Shimano's DI2 gears. Yes, DI2 is still very expensive and I think we're still desperate to see it trickle down to the more affordable 105 levels, but for Jack and I, I think we can both safely say that it is our favourite group set. Yes, in our experience, I personally prefer DI2. Now, before you tell us why we're completely wrong, remember this is just our opinion. Opinions vary across the whole team. In a couple weeks back, we published a video which compared SRAM Force AXS to Shimano Altegra DI2, and Matthew's findings were more balanced overall. But in our experience, we personally prefer Shimano's system. The shift is quiet and as quick as you'll ever need, and crucially for me, who is a reluctant home mechanic, it has required almost no maintenance. And that boils down to even, when it comes to a maintenance point of view, only having to charge one battery and not very often, whereas I think with ETAP it's guaranteed we'd either lose one of them or char forget to charge one before a shoot. Which has happened before. <laughs> I used Dura Ace Di2 on my 2019 hill climb bike, a giant TCR Advance, and despite letting the chain and cassette get pretty grubby at times, it still performed amazingly well. I also did something terrible with those gears, which some people would have you believe would create a black hole and swallow the universe in an instant. I ran a SRAM cassette with my Shimano gears. Yet, despite that group set heresy, it still performed okay, obviously not as good as having the Shimano cassette, but it goes to show how unfussy the group set is. If I could have Dura Ace or Ultegra DR2 on every road bike I own, I would, and for that reason, it has to go in my list. So these are our choices. Now, I'm sure some of you will disagree with us, particularly probably on that last point. And if you want to tell us how we are literal idiots, please do so in the comments and let us know what your all-time favorites are. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a video, you get a notification. Bye. Bye.